Hi, I'm Jacob Johnson, and this is the podcast for WFC 120. I'm Jeffrey Scott. I'm Jess Karenson. I'm Ida Eastbaez. I'm AJ Chohan. And I'm Steven Zong. And we're going to be talking to you about the Northern Pike Minnow Bounty in the Columbia River. Thanks for listening. So the question is, why are there bounties for killing Northern Pike Minnow in the Columbia River, and should they continue? What is a pike minnow? The northern pike minnow is a part of the phylum Chordata and the order Cypriniformes. It was previously known as a northern squawfish, but the name was changed in the 90s. The pike minnows from the Columbian River system are typically a bright silvery color. This species prefers to live in lakes or slow-moving waters such as large pools that form above hydroelectric dams. Pike minnows have an elongated body averaging 8 to 12 inches, but they have the capability to reach lengths up to 24 inches. Northern pike minnows are a highly aggressive species that feed on vertebrates and other fishes. And why does this matter, and who does it matter to? According to the Northern Pike Minnow Management Program, the pike minnow feeds on juvenile salmonoids and steelheads as they make their way to the ocean and therefore don't go to reproduce. Both the salmon and steelhead are also native to the river and play an important role to the Native American tribes surrounding the river, as well as recreational fishermen. The Columbia River Inter-Tribal Fish Commissions says tribes such as the Nez Perce, Umatilla, Warm Springs, and Yakima tribes have a cultural and religious connection to them. They hold rituals regarding the salmon and believe that God placed them together and therefore it is their duty to protect it. With pike minnows predation on the salmon, the culture and religious practices of the tribes are at risk. The return of the salmon and steelheads to the river after development also plays an important role in the ecosystem. When they die in the river, their decomposition gives off nutrients to it and therefore the surrounding ecosystems, such as the trees and other species. They feed our, our, the forest by bringing essential nutrients back to the river from the ocean. Both of these native species are important to providing nutrients to the ecosystem, but also to people. Not only do they provide meals for the surrounding tribes, but the steelheads and salmon are important in commerce because of its high content in omega-3 fats. Fish farms deriving from the Columbia River are essential to companies such as the Pacific Seafood Company. Their commerce is based off of the population of the fishes, and if the pike minnow continues to eat them, these already threatened species become more vulnerable in terms of population size. Why is there a bounty? The bounty is in place in order to partially mitigate the damage to the salmon caused by the placement of hydroelectric dams on the Columbia River. The bounty is funded by the Bonneville Power Administration and administered by the Pacific States Marine Fisheries Commission. The Bonneville Power Administration funds the bounty because their dams negatively impact the salmon. The negative effects of the dam, along with the negative effects of predation by the northern pike minnow, has led to the creation of the bounty. The goal is not to eliminate the northern pike minnow, but to reduce the size and abundance of larger and older northern pike minnow, which prey on the juvenile salmon. Is there scientific evidence supporting the claim that northern pike minnow actually eat a large number of salmon? A 1996 study on northern pike minnow predation on juvenile salmonids by Buchanan et al. found that resident predator fishes consumed between 1.9 and 3.3 million juvenile salmon and steelhead annually over a three-year period and one reservoir alone. Northern pike minnow accounted for 78% of the predation on juvenile salmonids. The study also said that individual predation rates were low but the northern pike minnow population was very large. Why is the bounty for, nor for only northern pike minnow 9 inches and larger than? Research conducted by Vig et al. in 1991 reported that salmonids are an important diet component for large, old northern pike minnow, and consumption rates of salmonids increases exponentially as pike minnow size increases. What is the science behind the effectiveness of bounties in restoring populations? Another report by Vig et al. stated that although predator control programs have been used for many years as a mean to manage natural resources, they have often been discredited by the biological community for being ineffective. Bounties oftentimes do not work for a few reasons. The prey populations couldn't be controlled by the predators, the success relies heavily on the removal of a large portion of the predator population. 
Control efforts are difficult to maintain as predator populations decrease, and large removals of predator populations stimulate a compensatory response from other predators or by the predator population itself. With that being said, it is still widely used today, and in 2000, Beam Sturfer wrote a report on how to decide if intervention is effective and appropriate. He said a systematic approach can be determined for any case if predation or competition is likely to be important, potential predators or competitors can be affected by changes in harvest or other management options, and biological benefits outweigh the costs as well as social and political considerations. The Columbia River Pike Minnow Program is a rare exception that meets all of these guidelines, and therefore intervention in the form of the Bounty Program has been deemed significant, effective, and acceptable. So what are the possible options moving forward? There are three main options that seem possible. The bounty can stay in place for the foreseeable future. If it works, why change it? The bounty could be eliminated on ethical and financial grounds, letting nature take its course, or the bounty and the dams could slowly be phased out since the Bonewell Power Association is $15 million in debt and is likely going to continue facing financial troubles, which would lead over time to a partially restored ecosystem. What could be some of the unintended consequences, uncertainties of each option? The option with the least unknown uncertainties but most severe consequences is to leave pike minnows alone and take away the bounty system. The salmons would most likely go extinct in the wild, while the impact of pike minnow on other native fish species is uncertain. There would also be repercussions in the fishing industry, but to what extent is unclear. Using the bounty system, most of the uncertainties come from increased anthropogenic influences, such as overfishing and the introduction of native of invasive species. The bounty system incentivizes people to come fish for the pike minnow, but at the same time, other fish are also caught and may be kept by fishermen. Just one or two being kept may, may not seem like a lot, or even able to hurt the populations of these native fish, but some of, some of these species are also endangered, and assuming that there will be a large amount of people in attendance, this number may be much larger than it actually seems. Even if people catch and release the fish, there is scientific evidence pointing out that catch and release reduces the re reproductive ability of fish due to the stress of fighting against the angler. There is reportedly less eggs produced by the angled fish and the survival rate of these eggs are lower compared to fish who didn't get angled. Unfortunately, the level of impact this may have upon the population as a whole is unknown. An uncertain factor concerning the purpose of the bounty system to reduce large pike minnow is the possibility of compensatory predation from other species of fish in the river, such as smallmouth bass. With large pike minnows gone, the extra space created may just as easily be filled by other predators of salmonids. An option that would keep using the bounty system until the dismantling of the dams. The new uncertain factor is what is going to happen to salmons after the removal. There have been studies involved in dam removals showing a large amount of sediments that is released due to long periods of sediment accumulation. This is a major problem for salmon because they lay eggs in coarse riverbeds with gravel. The presence of se sediments will lower the survival rate of salmon eggs due to suffocation. With all the information on the table, what does your group recommend? So as a group, we came to the consensus that we should keep the bounty on northern pike minnow and phase it out along with the slow removal of the dams. We decided on this because it's the best option to increase the salmon populations in the long run and restoring the river back to the way it looked historically. The dams must be removed slowly to lessen their impact on the species in the Columbia River. If they are removed too quickly, then the population moving downstream will suffocate salmon eggs killing the next generation. Slowly removing dams will lessen the impacts of pollution, but pairing that with bounties on the pike minnow will help reduce the possibility of fatal population decrease. Pacific States Marine Fisheries Commission stated that northern pike minnow bounty has caused a 35 to 40 percent decrease in salmonoid consumption. And according to salmonrecovery.gov, 
this saves four to six million salmon every year. So even if pollution moving downstream decreases some of the population, hopefully the pike male bowing will be able to counteract predation and help increase the odds of salmon survival. But after the dams are removed and the debris has moved out of the river, cutting the pike male bowing will allow the Columbia to return to a more natural state 